Uh, yeah, so I'm Will, and this is Hannah and James. And what we wanted to do for the project was build um, a kind of a couple of simple tools to help people that may have um, tracks um, from uh, biologging tools like um, satellite tags or acoustic tags or some other method uh, to link up the movements and behaviors of animals that they've been working with uh, ocean creatures. Um, so kind of the background to all of this is there have been some recent papers come out over the last few years that have done really cool work showing how certain pelagic animals cue in on different types of mesoscale oceanographic features, but the ways in which they do that computationally aren't always super clear. Um, so that was kind of our goal with this project was to just build a tool where people, if you have a satellite track or an animal track that you want to do something like this with, you can plug into our notebook and work through those issues. Um, and so we're going to run through a couple of examples for you of how you can do interactive uh, plotting with the animal track and different features. One is going to be the sea surface temperature, so just kind of the kind of standard remote sensing product. And then the other is going to be with a, uh, what some folks call like a value-added satellite data product, which is this mesoscale eddy atlas um, that's maintained by the Aviso satellite program. Um, yeah, not forgetting anything there. So yeah, we can just, we'll uh, run you guys through our notebook here. Um, Yeah, how's the app? Let's see. You should be able to scroll. Okay. Um, so the track that we used is a simulation of a loggerhead sea turtle track in the North Pacific. Um, and this is posted on our GitHub repository. So anyone who wants to go try it out can also do that. Um, so basically, we obviously just load in. And this is what our track looks like. Um, and so the first thing we wanted to do was um, take data that you could find on AirDAP and um, there's a tool in MATLAB and in R called Extractomatic, which basically uses um, a track line and extracts the value of whatever um, data set you're using. So for in this case, sea surface temperature it extracts the value at each point um, to that track. And so there's actually not a similar tool in Python, which I was surprised about, but I decided that would be a good first um, step to our interests. And so I basically tried to build an extractomatic type of tool for Python. Um, so this may look very similar. This is a plot that we were showed earlier this week, but this is the sea surface temperature um, data set we use from AirDAP. Um, and again, this is pulling in um, this x-ray straight from um, the web. Um, and so this is a very simple for loop that basically just goes through and extracts the sea, surf sea surface temperature value at each point in the track, and then appends the original track data frame so that those values are now attached. Um, and so this is just a pretty simple example of what our track looks like over time, and you can see um, the sea surface temperatures on the y-axis. Scrolling. Um, do you want to talk about volume? Yeah. Um, everything's happening. Um, so, if we're on the same place, uh, we were, uh, interacting with this Aviso product. And so we connected to it through an FTP server. Um, and we won't run through this now, but uh, you would need a, a, a user ID and login. And this would prompt you for that if you were to log in on your own. So you'd have to actually do that through Aviso. Um, but so we were able to get, uh, we now are storing this uh, uh, NC file locally and we've been interacting with that uh, ever since. And so what we do is load the NC file in and uh, extract um, the any information in the same spatial and temporal domain as our track information. Um, and our interest was plotting these uh, 
these two data streams concurrently on an interactive sticky map. Um, and so we ended up going uh, using Folium to do that. Um, we had tried to actually use uh, X-Array to interact with this NetCDF file, uh, but found that uh, the uh, time format, uh, this CF time format, did not talk to things like Panda or Folium. And so we ended up having to go back and, and use a slightly different, uh, just this data set uh, way of interacting with the NetCDF. Um, so it was sort of one of, the, one of the pitfalls of using maybe a new technology like X-Array it did not talk well to some of these older products. Um, but we ended up uh, subsetting the data to the same spatially temporal domain and uh, created a, uh, a few sort of interactive slippy maps. And so the first being a, a time series array of the sea surface temperature and the animal's movements over time. So color being the, uh, the bin uh, sea surface temperature data, it's been into five separate things, and so warmer colors or warmer temperatures. And we're able to look at this over time and, and sort of get a sense for what the temperature was in space and time. And finally, we uh, did the same thing with the, uh, the Eddy database, and so we were able to plot uh, over time uh, concurrently the turtle's location as well as the uh, the eddies that we found from our uh, NetCDF file. And so this is our exciting uh, bubble graph. Um, but essentially it's giving you our, our turtle in, in green is uh, just to give you a sense of maybe what, what features it might be interacting with over time. Uh, one thing we weren't able to do was get the radii, the radiuses of all, all of these uh, eddies to be exactly uh, sort of spatially accurate. Um, so it's hard to say where one eddy ends and the other begins, but they are relative to one another. So a big eddy is big here and a small eddy is small. Um, but uh, just for maybe for getting to know your data or trying to understand which data, which uh, features you might want to target or look at in more closer detail, this might be a useful tool for visualizing uh, sort of the spatial and temporal overlap. And the cool thing is just from like a visual perspective, it appears this turtle would be targeting those warm core eddies. So that's something that we can take and then use in a later model. <laughs> no, no, you don't know that. Um, <laughs> I just so the, when I kind of use the term like value added product, it's a satellite product is based off of the sea level and it can use like a series of this to basically like calculate that they, this is considered a part of the sea level analysis. And so this processing that happens you with know, a piece of and then provide this product without the numbers of the So that that CDF file that normally we, in our workflow we query it, um, we don't have to use that, we would ask you to log in and password for Visa or which is a free account, you can have to set it up. Um, and then you have that, that CDF file that's really just a uh, list of observations with uh, the ID and associated track ID.
that flow and then every other service is yeah, basically we query the um, AirDAP data by using the spatial control extent of the graph, which in this case was quite small, and so the reason 